Next part is that of the converse. And you will find many, many, many proofs in your later mathematical classes through uh, the converse. So uh, here, let's uh, see what converse means. So uh, uh, first of all, let's look at, uh, do an example. If the physical environment changes, then the biological environment changes. So this is a particular statement. So let's let it denote by P. Then the contrapositive or the converse of this statement is. If the biological environment does not change, then the physical environment does not change. So, uh, so uh, what happens is that the contrapositive is basically uh, we, uh, for writing the contrapositive, we generally write the negation of Q first, followed by the negation of P first. By negation, followed by the negation of P. To, the important point to note here is that the converse carry the same meaning as the original statement. It's not the negation. It carries the same meaning as that of the actual statement of which uh, the converse has been written. Now the most important part of the uh, chapter is the validating statement. We have dis discussed what statements are. We have discussed various meanings of the symbols used in uh, making a statement. Now we come to see how to decide whether a statement is true or false. So as we have discussed in compound statements, uh, there are certain rules. So rule 1 states that if a P and Q are mathematical statements, then in order to show that the statement P and Q is true, we have to show individually that P is true and individually that Q is true. So to prove uh, P or Q is true, we, we can have three cases. Uh, the third case is when case 3 is if P and Q are true. So we can have three uh, particular uh, cases in which the compound statement will be true. The first one is when P is false and Q is true. The second is with, uh, when Q is false and P is true. And third is when both the statements are true. So we'll, in all the cases we'll have the statement, compound statement to be true. It's a general trick which I use often is that uh, to prove that a particular uh, P, or, uh, P or Q statement is true, I see or look at the negation of this particular statement. That is, this, uh, when uh, the statement is false. All the, uh, all the other conditions which doesn't satisfy uh, for the falsity, we get the statement to be true. So, we, uh, so uh, in general, we have to only check single condition, like we have to check in and. Rule three is for implications when we have if and uh, if then. In order to prove such statements to be true, that if P then Q, we need to show that uh, any one of the following case is true. So, case one says direct method. By assuming that P is true, we have to prove Q must be true. And second case in which we, true, we prove that if Q is false, then P must be false. Here note that we, I have used the statement must. It shouldn't be like if it can be or it cannot be. It should be one, something. It should be true or false. Next and last one is for uh, next rule uh, for if and only if. So in order to prove this, we have, uh, let's say we have a statement P if and only if Q. We need to show that if P is true, then Q is true. And if Q is true, then P is true. It's uh, also written as P implies Q. This is a particular symbol which is used for representing this particular statement. This is uh, the thing I was talking about. Uh, at the converse part by contradiction. So what we do is that we prove very many questions by using the method of contradiction. In uh, the method of contradiction what we do is that a statement, if a statement P is true, we assume that P is not true. If we have to prove, let's say, let's uh, if to prove that P is true 
then we assume that p is not true and in uh, our assumption we work out the uh, general things which we are which are given and arrive at a contradiction that is contradiction means we uh, arrive at a condition which uh, falsifies one of the earlier given statements so uh, we have a contradiction there and if we arrive at the contradiction it's simply that uh, our assumption that p is not true is false therefore we get p equals p as true so uh, let's work out an example to uh, we are proving this particular statement uh, to be false using the method of contradiction so to prove a statement to be false by method of contradiction we assume the contrary that is we assume that this particular statement is true let's say if n is odd integer then n is prime is true so to so if this particular thing is true then we have n equals to 2 as odd is not prime because it's an even number so as you know from your previous knowledge that n equals to 2 is a prime number so we have basically come to a contradiction here and therefore our assumption was false that is this particular statement is not true therefore the statement is false